we're going to look at the white test for heteroscedasticity. Uh, a real quick little Stata tutorial here. Uh, so let's call up our uh, data set here. I've already uh, got the data set ready to go, but if you want to play along, we can use that uh, Boston College data set access uh, package. So BCUs, and it's the Crime 4 data set that I'm using here. So this has county level crime rate data. So just to bring up a regression that we can use for our test here, let's regress crime rate as a function of, say, population density and police per capita in our uh, county level data set here. And of course, we'd be concerned, is there a error variance that changes county by county, either as an explicit function of one or more of our x variables or just in general is there heteroscedasticity so the white test approach to investigating this matter uh, we're going to take a look at in four different versions okay uh, we'll look at what we'll kind of call the standard version or the full version with the f statistic for joint significance uh, then there's a little bit of a shortcut to that uh, that we'll take a look at, also using the f-stat, and then two versions of the test using the chi-square distributed Lagrange multiplier test statistic, uh, but really investigating the same issue, uh, and we get what we'll call the, the full version, uh, and then there's a, a built-in stata command that, as long as you know what it's doing, uh, is a nice easy way to, uh, to get these results. So all of these tests are going to have the same basic setup, right? We're going to run our model, y as a function of our x variables, that's what we've done here, um, then we're going to need to capture the residuals from that model, square the residuals, and treat those squared residuals as our stand-in, as our proxy for the observation by observation error variance. And then that's going to be the dependent variable in our test or auxiliary equation. Right? Uh, then all we want to know is, whatever we put on the right-hand side of that equation, does it significantly explain variation in that dependent variable in the squared residual. If so, that's going to be strong evidence of a heteroscedastic error. So let's get those first steps started. So we've estimated the model. Then we just use the predict command to get some residuals, call them u hat. So predict u hat comma resid. That's going to tell Stata to generate observation by observation. Sorry, I've already done this. Uh, let's drop that variable and then create it again. There we go. So you would type in uh, the command predict u hat resid observation by observation. We're going to get a new column variable uh, that's going to be those residuals. Uh, then, I'm going to think ahead here. Uh, I'll bet I've already done this too. Uh, then we're going to create the square of those residuals. So we're going to use the generate statement, generate a new variable called u hat 2 that's going to be the square of each observation of the residuals that we just created. So here's going to be our dependent variable now in that test equation. So the test equation here, we're just going to run it as an OLS. So regress with u hat 2 as our dependent variable. And then this default version of the white test, we're going to have that kind of very broad specification. So we're going to have all of the x variables from the original model plus all of the squares of the x variables, plus all of the pairwise interactions, the pairwise products of those x variables. So in our case here, keeping it nice and simple, we've got two variables. So we're going to have two variables plus each of those variables squared plus the product of the two. So we'll end up with five terms on the right-hand side. Uh, again, the bigger your model, you're going to see an exponential increase in the number of coefficients that have to be estimated here. But for our example, we're going to have, call it our x1 variable density, we're going to have our x2 variable police per capita, and then the squares we can generate with the stata interaction operator, so the continuous variable c dot density interacted with itself c dot density, so that's going to be density squared, and then same thing with police per capita c dot, sorry, police per capita, Paul PC, interacted again with itself, so we need that c dot prefix to indicate that it is a continuous variable. So we've got the two squares, and then just the cross product of the two now. So c dot density interacted with c dot 
Paul PC. So we got a lot going on, but the answer to the question, is there joint significance explaining our squared residual? Well, that all is answered right here, right? The F statistic that Stata automatically generates with every OLS output tests exactly what we want to know. And the p-value gives us the exact level of significance. So p-value well below 0.01, f-statistic well above the 1% critical, tells us we can strongly reject the null hypothesis. So that will always get you where you need to go, right? but it's a little bit clunky, especially with big uh, original models, a lot of x variables. So the, the shortcut version here just takes advantage of the fact that the fitted value of the original OLS, the y hat, well, that has all the information in the levels of the x variables. And then if we square that white hat, the, the y hat, that has all the information in the squares of the x variables and all of the pairwise interactions. If you just do the little quadratic uh, expansion, you'll see, right, over here on the right, we're going to have, sorry, our x, uh, x1, x2 squared, and then x1 times x2. And that, will, of course, will expand up the more, uh, no matter how many variables you have. So we can get all that information with just two coefficients. So to do this, let's, because I probably already did this as well, let's, let's go ahead and uh, re-estimate the original model. So that was the crime rate model here. And then we need to use the predict command again, but to get the y hat. So here we can call it crime rate hat, whatever you might want to call it. Then of course the default is the linear projection there. So now we've already got the squared residual. So our test equation becomes u hat to the squared residuals as a function of our newly created crime rate hat and the square of that. fitted value, so we need to interact it again with itself. So, And let's not forget the continuous indicator. So C dot crime rate hat interacted with C dot crime rate hat. That looks good. And all we need to know again is their joint significance. So we only have two degrees of freedom here, so naturally we're going to get uh, quite a bit of a different F statistic that's calculated, but it is still showing the same answer, again, in a much easier format, reject the null beyond 1%, we have significant heteroscedasticity. So now, let's do the, the last phase here, wherein we can replicate by hand the Lagrange multiplier chi-square statistic for joint significance, uh, and then show how to do it with the Stata shortcut. So again, the, well, let's go back to the default version of this white test. So let's bring up the full version here. So that was the u hat squared as a function of x1, x2, x1 squared, x2 squared, and x1 times x2. So all we're saying now is instead of using the f statistic, let's test joint significance of all these coefficients with a Lagrange multiplier test statistic. Uh, why you would want to do that? Um, it turns out the Lagrange multiplier test has uh, fewer restrictions in terms of distributional assumptions. So we don't need to have IID error terms, uh, and we can have asymptotic normality uh, with the Lagrange multiplier. Read your econometrics textbook, textbook for more information there. But after we get the results here, all we need to do is calculate the product of the R squared from our test equation which is, in this case, the point 3007 times the number of observations, so n times r squared. So we can do this within Stata, obviously. We could just do it with a calculator. Um, but kind of fun to do it in Stata, and also you could embed this into a do file, right? So we might want to have uh, this scalar, or rather than creating a variable, creating just a simple numerical value, uh, that's going to be our lm white that's going to take on the value of the product of the r squared from the most recent estimated model. So we can call that up and state it with e parenthesis r2, so that's our estimated r squared, times, same thing, the 
number of observations in from our most recent estimate, E parentheses in. And then to see what the actual number is, we can just type in display LM white, and that'll call up the value of the scalar. So we get this value of 189. Um, there is a way to call up the, uh, the P value, the area to the right uh, of the chi-square uh, tail, right? beyond that value 189, we could also look up the critical table at the back of our handy econometrics textbook. That 189 is going to be well beyond the 1% critical value, but we would want to be able to look that up. But now that we see how that's done, um, we can call it up in Stata using the so-called uh, information matrix mm -hmm. test suite. So this is uh, developed by Cameron and Trevetti. Uh, it's got much more information in it than, than we're going to use. Um, but all we would do is use this as a post estimation command following the original structural model. So let's go all the way back to our crime rate prediction model. And the command is I am test comma white. And there we have it. So white's test for the null of homoscedasticity, chi square with five degrees of freedom, Again, the x1, x2, x1 squared, x2 squared, x1 times x2, and everything we need to know right there in the p-value, reject the null of homoscedasticity well beyond 1%. So in this case, all four versions of the white test thankfully gave us the same answer. You should be comfortable with the kind of the logic and the approach of all of them. Uh, and again, once you know what this guy's doing, uh, there's no reason not to just call up that IM test white following your structural model. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Hope it was helpful. Thank you very much.